Hi, Evelyn. I was having a thought yesterday while I was outside working, and, and I just wanted to mention it to you. And I wanted to mention about the importance of counting. And I know that sounds trivial, counting, but it's something that is actually important. And for me, as a scientist, it's something that is extremely important. So I was outside and I bought uh, eight little white pots and they had little tags in them and in the pot was uh, this vining uh, sweet potato. It's not a real potato but it's a, a decorative plant and it's going to have these long beautiful vines. So I, I took them out and I, I planted them in this planter that I've got and afterwards, I was picking up the uh, little white pots because they're just the right size to, to use again. And they had these tags, but the tags were stuck in there, so I had to cut them off. So I, I, I cut through the tags, and I picked up the pots. And then as I was picking up the tags, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had eight of those. And then I picked up that little, the little tab that I sliced off that allowed me to pull it out of the pot. And... I picked up seven. And I think, okay, seven. And seven's not eight. Now there was a temptation there to say, well, you know, whatever, it, it disappeared. But that's the thing. It, things don't disappear. And this is what makes counting important. Recognizing that if you had seven, seven's not eight, there had to be eight, because I saw eight, and then it disappeared. So I went through and I, I dumped out the pots, and I, I found that little eighth tab, and then I put them away. And then I threw away the tabs and the, the tags and kept the pots. And it's that attention that I want to, to point out, recognizing that if you know there were a certain number, there still has to be. You know, a, a lot of people talk about losing socks in the dryer. Well, you can't lose socks in the dryer. See, that's, that's the thing. If you put you know, 12 socks in the washer and then move 12 socks from the washer to the dryer, 12 socks should still be in the dryer. And if you're folding clothes and you only have 11 socks, that means that you might have dropped it from your folding station to the dryer, or it might still be in the dryer, or it st might be still in the washer, but it has to be somewhere. And I have all of my socks matched. Why? Because I've never lost a sock. I always have the same number. And, you know, with socks, I, I don't necessarily count the exact number of socks going in my washer and dryer, but I count to make sure that there are multiples of two. So they're evenly paired. And if they're not evenly paired, I go back immediately and I figure out, okay, where did it go to? And that's also important is that if you're counting something and it doesn't work out right, the sooner you try to figure out where it went wrong, the better off you are. If you, you know, let your extra sock just kind of float and you say, well, I have no idea where it went to. Well, could be you're going to have a floating sock for the next, you know, two years because you just can't figure it out. Uh, and I know that it sounds silly. I mean, even like, you know, the little tag, the, the plastic tag. Well, by picking up that plastic tag immediately, it meant that in the future I wouldn't have to hunt down a plastic tag or I wouldn't stir that plastic tag into my garden and have, you know, some plastic that showed up in my, in my flowers later. And there's places where it's important. It's important, you know, particularly if, remember we, we were listening to the story of uh, one day in the life of Ivan Densevich, and they were counting the prisoners as they were coming back in from uh, working. And when the number of prisoners they counted coming in didn't match the number going out, they recounted again and again and again. That's important because if the number going out and the number coming in don't match, either you gained a person, which, you know, for a Soviet work camp doesn't necessarily make sense, or you lost a person because someone escaped. And that's, that's important. Now, there are places where 
I don't count so much. For example, baking, when I bake, you know, I, I uh, tend to round my numbers. Instead of weighing out exactly 147 grams of flour and 92 grams of water, I'll, you know, take you know, 90 grams of water and 150 grams of flour. Now, it changes things a little bit, you know, changes my hydration level, you know, say from, you know, 65% to 64%, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, however, my bread, every time I make a loaf of bread, it's, it's a little bit different. And it's a little bit of an experiment, and I'm, I'm learning how to make bread, but that means that I have variation. If I wanted my bread to be exactly identical every single time, say I worked in a bakery, then I'd measure out exactly 147 grams of flour. And you know, these numbers are important because people are interested in having a uh, final dough ball that has a, a certain mass. So oftentimes people will say, well, one loaf of bread should be exactly one kilogram of, of uh, dough. And that's a place where counting becomes important. You know, another story about counting was uh, the story of uh, the cuckoo's egg. So th this was in the oh, it must have been the early '90s, maybe it's the late '80s. There was a, a spy that was breaking into U.S. supercomputers and uh, using that as as a means of getting in and, and stealing secrets. And they got caught because this guy named Cliff Stoll, who eventually uh, wrote the book, uh, The Cuckoo's Egg, caught him. And the way that he caught this spy was looking at the uh, accounting, and he, it was just his regular job. And at the end of the day, he added everything up, and there was a 75-cent charge to the budget that he couldn't account for. And he said, well... The 75 cents missing. Where did it go? Now, a normal person, normal, I'm meaning average, your average person is, is going to say, well, 75 cents, who cares? You know, it'll round to one or, or whatever. They, they don't think about those little details, but those little details are actually quite important. And in this case, it was a spy that logged into the supercomputer just for, you know, half a minute and then jumped into a uh, national security computer. So these, these details are uh, extremely important. And it's not just the details, but also recognizing that, you know, when the numbers are supposed to match, they have to match, unless you can account for it, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, perhaps you may be uh, weighing out bread and you let it sit overnight and it weighs less in the morning, well, say, well, I know that a certain amount of water evaporated overnight, and, and that is a way to account for it. But if you can't account for the loss or the gain, then uh, it's really important. And it's this type of observation that makes good scientists. There was a, a scientist named Danny Sheckman, who I actually had dinner with once, uh, it must have been about 10 years ago. No, no. It wasn't 10 years ago. It was... What is it? Yeah, actually about 10, maybe 11 years ago. Uh, and he got the Nobel Prize for discovering quasi-crystals. And what happened was he was performing a, a rather routine... Uh, experiment, and he observed uh, five-fold symmetry. And don't worry about those details. What you need to know is that he observed something which was weird, and rather than just pass over it, he actually tracked down, well, why does it look like this? Why is it five? And he discovered something for which he got the Nobel Prize. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, turns out it's actually a fairly common phenomena. But other people, many of whom observed it before him, 
they didn't even pay attention. They just ignored it and they just went on because, you know, they were doing their job. They were, you know, making a measurement. They said, oh, I don't understand this. It sh shouldn't be there. There must be, you know, a twin. There must be something that explains it. And rather than track it down, uh, they went on with their life. And that's where uh, the Nobel Prize was awarded because he recognized there's something that shouldn't be. And he took the time and... You know, it wasn't a lot of time. He took a little bit of time and, and tracked it down and, and figured out where it came from. So, as I say, I just wanted to, to mention the importance of counting, and it's kind of frustrating dealing with other people. Sometimes you'll you'll work with people, and you know they'll be planting plants, and they'll say, "Well, you know, there's only seven tags. You know, there must have been missing one, or it must have disappeared, or like, no, it didn't disappear. It was there. You just don't want to look for it." Uh, but that, those type of details, and in particular, counting the number of objects, pretty important.